Ah. Ew, did you just crack your joints on camera? I'm sorry, I had to. You have a problem. You crack way too much, especially your fingers. Yeah, it probably has something to do with my love for playing video games. Speaking of which, I know video games aren't too popular with the blind and low vision community, but have you ever played? Mm, never really been my thing. Okay, well, would you consider playing an audio-only game? I think I'd give it a try. Well, Molly, you'll be happy to know that I recently met up with a company called Falling Squirrel at the CNIB. They are currently developing an audio-only game for PC called The Veil. Now, games like this aren't new to the industry, but the team at Falling Squirrel has high hopes for creating a mainstream product that will transcend audiences regardless of their abilities. Let's check it out. Ah! The sounds you're hearing are of a combat demo being tested for the audio game, The Veil. Dave Evans is the founder of Falling Squirrel Productions and explains to us what his company wants to achieve with this game. Our focus is gonna be accessibility uh, and narrative. Those are the two things we're trying to innovate on. Um, I do intend to make uh, visual-based games as well, um, but the general idea is uh, I wanna understand how to make games accessible for the visually impaired. There's certainly some easy things you can do for people with heart vision, but now I wanna sort of drill down on this idea, and this is what our company, I guess, is all about. How can we take mechanics that um, are, are visual based and have something that, that works as an all audio experience. The Fallen Squirrel team believes that they can reach a broader audience in the gaming world. Jamie Robaz, producer of The Veil, explains the aspects of the project that will ensure gamers of all abilities keep coming back for more. We want to make it a mainstream experience. We believe that we have the know-how and the capability to make something that stands out as a fully fleshed out title that you know both sighted gamers and uh, visually impaired gamers can play and have a, a robust experience. So it's that kind of deep story, branching outcomes for the game, a, a combat system, replayability, uh, and a lot of that really meaty value for the game that uh, we feel makes the veil stand out. From the blind prince who is the lead character to the choose your own adventure style, the team has put a lot of thought into the narrative. But delivering the story with a complex soundscape is also key. We're crafting these audio landscapes that you can experience and walk around in and you can hear all around you, you know, the, the anvil and hammer of a blacksmith. And you can, just by listening to that, turn towards that and find the blacksmith just by using your ears. So we're really hoping that even though we don't have visuals, we can still build these unique and different cities and people will know, oh, well, this is the city with the blacksmith. This is the city that has, you know, all the kids running around uh, uh, and that we can have these unique places just by interactive audio alone. Complexity and depth are important, but another aspect the team is trying to navigate is how exploration can be incorporated. It didn't come as a surprise that the testers, many of whom are blind or low vision, found this aspect of the game highly appealing. Accessibility consultant for The Veil, Martin Corsellis, explains why he enjoys this feature. The one I like a lot is the uh, you can wander through a village and find various things. Like there's, you can find a chicken, a dog, a pub, which is my favorite. So it, it's really neat because it, it gives you a 3D sort of virtual audio tour of a village. You get to orient yourself to a map, which is kind of neat. While Martin, a blind gamer, is very go. familiar with audio and video games, many members of the community have not ventured into the gaming world, like Kevin Weber. He took part in the testing process we attended at the CNIB and shared his unique thoughts on the benefits of gaming. There's a great deal of my brain which doesn't get stimulated. Um, and this is an easy way to uh, access areas of my brain and my personality that, and I think that's the purpose of games. It's imagination and it's, and it's the development of an interior landscape and dialogue that something like this is uniquely designed to do. I can see it leading to almost a, you know, an elasticizing of, of, of my brain. Martin has had plenty of experience expanding his mind with games 
and hopes that the industry as a whole will pursue Fallen Squirrel's goal of making games accessible. That way, more people can have an experience like Kevin. One of the things I'd like to see is not have an audio category on its own. I'd like to have what we're discovering here implemented into other games. I mean, gaming, it's a big industry and I, I think it's time to have more accessibility just built into the engines themselves so that it's easier for developers to be able to put the, the features in without too much trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't stop.